Hello, DJ Vic Vapor with you. And today we're in this lesson, Ableton Live Advanced Concepts Tutorial. I want to take a look at uh, dummy clips as LFOs. So essentially I've got three clips here, all with a C note, one bar long. They're all identical and they've just got a lead synth sound. It's pretty straightforward. But I want to take this blank MIDI clip here and I want to send... I want to use it as an LFO to create some sort of uh, movement within these three. And the way we want to do that is, first thing you need to do is you need to go to, uh, let's see, you need to go to your audio MIDI setup, click your IAC driver, and make sure device is online that, that is checked. Make sure that's checked. And then once you do that, go into Live, Preferences, and then here, under the uh, MIDI link, make sure the input is set on under the remote, and make sure the output is set on under the track. So essentially, what we've been able to, what we're able to do by setting it up that way, is we're creating a loop. The uh, the information is being sent out of Ableton to the IAC driver bus and then back to Ableton. So under this blank MIDI channel that we have here, I've selected on my MIDI 2, I've selected the IAC driver. So again, that's creating a loop. It's sending information out to the IAC and the IAC sending it back into Ableton. So what that's going to allow me to do from here is under this clip, I want to have select the E and open up this panel. So we've got our MIDI control, and then the second drop-down box, I want to go to number one, because we're going to work on number one. Turn these guys off. We're going to work on number one. So what I want to do first is I want to select the fader. Play. And then hit MIDI map. Let's create a, got a little bit ahead of myself there. Let's create some sort of envelope here or, or some sort of shaped form up and down, whatever you can get as fancy as you want with these. For tutorial sake, I'm just creating something easy and simple. All right. So now, grab Fader 1, wiggle it a little bit. I'm going to right click. Edit MIDI map, and then I'm going to hit play. And you can see right there, it assigned one to one. So it assigned this blank MIDI clip to a volume fader of one. You can hit the MIDI and come out. And then if you watch this fader now, it's getting a signal from this. Pretty cool. So let's get the other ones assigned. So we'll go back to our clip here. I'm going to turn this guy off for now. Turn the middle one on since that's where we're working. So we're back to our clip, and it's kind of important to follow along here. So I'm going to select Command A, which is select all. Command A, select all this. Command X, cut it. And then here under the drop down box, the second one, we're going to go to number two, and then we're going to paste it. Command V. So now I've got that pasted back. So I'm going to grab the fader on channel 2, give it a little wiggle, hit play, and then go to MIDI map. Right click, edit MIDI map, I hit play, and now it's assigned that 1 to 2. Right, and on MIDI. Now, both of these, or this one should be following this. All right, so we've got one more to go. Let's go back to our clip here. I'll turn this guy off and turn on the third one. So on our clip here again, I'm going to Command A, 
Command A, that selected everything. Command X cuts it. And then drop down box, go to three. And Command V. So now we've got our pattern here on three. So let's wiggle this guy a little bit. Hit play. MIDI map, stop, take the MIDI off. I'm gonna right click, edit MIDI map, hit play again, it should assign it. Perfect, so we've got one to one, one to two, one to three. Take off the MIDI map. Now this third one should be following this pattern. Perfect, so let's get all three of them working in concert. And I'll show you a little bit more in detail here. So back to our blank clip. And if we go to our blank clip and we pull up number one, now it doesn't have a pattern because we haven't assigned one. So let's go ahead and we 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 were Xing those out, command, we were copying all, then cutting and pasting. So it was important we did it in that sequence. So follow along, you'll get this. It might take you a few tries, so don't get frustrated. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm just gonna draw in some patterns here on one. You can see the faders already starting to follow anything we're doing. Um, I'm going to do Alt. We can bend some stuff here and give it more of an LFO type performance. Make any shape you want. I mean, ultimately, it's creativity at this point, or, or if you have something specific in mind for your production. This application, though, if you really, really put this to use, you can come up with some exceptionally uh, well designed stuff. So let's see, now I've got this guy on one. So that, that guy's going to be, that's the pattern one's going to follow. So now if I go to two, it should be blank, yeah, because we cut it. So let's go ahead and get something going here on two. Create some wild shapes. Now, one of the other things that I didn't talk to you about that's really cool with this concept that takes it a little another step further is this linked feature. You can actually unlink this, and now this can be any length we want. It doesn't have to necessarily be the one bar length that we've indicated here. We can make it a little bit bigger, which the advantage there is now we can create some really, really, you know, cool polyrhythms as far as what's happening between the three so they're not all following each other in concert under one loop. So this guy, I'm going to go ahead and unlink, and I moved it out to four bars. So it's always going to be slightly different pattern than the other ones are playing, of course, but at different lengths as well. It's going to create some really nice polyrhythm to what's happening with our sound and with our fades. All right, so, and then the third one is already got something for us, I believe. Sorry, uh, under our blank clip, number three. Yeah, it's this guy right here. And we'll just go ahead and unlink it. And let's get it out. Let me see, the other one was four. Let's make this three. All right, so this guy's unlinked. It will be at three. That should be pretty wild enough. So now each one of these are going to play, you know, at different rhythms, and two of them are completely unlinked. So let's kind of hear what we've got going on here. <laughs> And 
again, that's just one note. You know, it's just that C note on all three of these creating that much diversion within our sound. And then our synth, of course, could be any preset we want. I've just got the same preset on each, but if I wanted to move this one to a different preset and this one to a different preset, we'll probably get even more dynamic things happening to us. So it might sound like total chaos, but then again, it might sound really cool. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Let's say we add something like a, uh, uh, let's get a simple delay on this guy. Kind of bring it back. Don't need to be too crazy. Bring up the feedback. That's three. Number two, let's put some reverb. And number one, I don't know, um, maybe a flanger would sound pretty sweet. So let's see what we get out of that. <laughs> So there you go. Let your mind run wild. Pretty cool stuff using dummy clips as LFOs. Thanks as always for tuning in. Thanks for pushing play and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.